What if I told you that one of the most important scientific discoveries in history didn't come from a high-tech lab, but from a cold, makeshift shed run by a woman banned from higher education in her home country? And that her notebooks, over a century later, are still radioactive? Marie Curie was born Maria Sklodowska in Warsaw, Poland, in 1867, under Russian occupation. Duh. Women weren't allowed to attend universities, so Marie studied in secret, through the Flying University, an illegal underground school for women. At 24, she left for Paris. She lived in poverty, ate barely enough to survive, and taught herself French. Duh. Yet she graduated first in her class at the Sorbonne. There, she met Pierre Curie, a brilliant but modest physicist who shared her hunger for discovery. Duh. Together, they began studying a mysterious glow coming from uranium salts. Duh. What was this strange energy? Marie suspected it was something entirely new. She named it, radioactivity. The Curies discovered two new radioactive elements, polonium, named after her homeland, and radium. To isolate these, they processed tons of ore by hand, in a crumbling shed with no safety gear, just hope and obsession. In 1903, Marie became the first woman to win a Nobel Prize, sharing the physics award with Pierre and Henri Becquerel. But just three years later, tragedy struck da. Pierre was killed in a street accident. Marie was devastated. Still, she continued the work they started, and in 1911, she earned a second Nobel Prize, this time in chemistry, for isolating pure radium. Da. She remains the only person in history to win Nobels in two different scientific fields. But the cost of her discoveries was steep. No one fully understood how dangerous radiation was da. Marie carried radioactive materials in her pockets. She stored them in drawers da. She was fascinated by the soft, bluish glow they emitted in the dark. But that glow was slowly destroying her body da. She suffered from chronic fatigue, frequent illness, and eventually developed a plastic anemia, a fatal disease caused by radiation exposure. She died in 1934, at the age of 66. The notebooks she used during her research are still radioactive today. Duh. They're stored in lead line boxes at the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. Anyone who wants to read them must sign a waiver and wear protective gear. Duh. A century later, the radiation is still strong. Her legacy, like that notebook, refuses to fade. But Marie Curie wasn't just a scientist in a lab. Duh. During World War I, she developed mobile X-ray units to treat wounded soldiers. Duh. She trained nurses, and even drove to the front lines herself. Her daughter, Irene, later won a Nobel Prize as well, making the Curies the most awarded family in science. Today, we use radiation in medicine, energy, and space, all thanks to her work. She changed science. Duh. She changed the world. Duh. And she changed what it means to be a woman in science. If this story moved you, like and share this video. Duh. Subscribe to learn more about the untold heroes of science and history. Some legacies shine brighter, even long after the light fades.